is Max frustrated enough that he's just going to go? Uh, have Red Bull reached a critical point where they just can't offer him what he needs anymore? We, we probably can't discount the fact that there was uh, that there has been a rift, that there is an ongoing sort of niggling issue there. Mm. Um, that that I think the performance of the car was able to paper over at the beginning of the season. Now that the car isn't performing as well and, and Max isn't sort of winning races by by uh, you know 20, 20 or 30 seconds. You know, Ricky Bobby just wanted a fast car. He just wanted to win. That's Max. Max just wants to win. It does seem like there's a path for Lander to win. It's not a crazy path for him. And I think Max sees that too because, look, as a driver, you're going to know how soon the competition has caught up to you race after race after race and a driver of Max's intelligence recognizes that so you can definitely see that panic in his voice. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Tired F1 pod and we are going to talk all things Max Verstappen. Fury! Is he going to stay at Red Bull? Is he going to go? Amar, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Excited. Excited to talk about Max as always. Um, I think We've got some stuff to sink our teeth into, especially after a pretty heated Hungarian Grand Prix from the man in the number one car. Um, again, I just want to talk about um, if we're talking about is Max going to leave Red Bull? I think there's going to be some push factors and there's going to be some pull factors. We're probably going to focus quite a bit on the push because why would a uh, uh, a three-time champion who's leading the world championship in both the drivers and the constructors, almost single-handedly, why would that guy want to leave that team? Um, but there's also a bit of a pull factor, I think, coming from other teams, specifically uh, the Brackley outfit. So I want to get into a little bit of that as well. So let's kick off with why he might want to leave Red Bull. Um, again, I've got three reasons. I've got one, his uh, rift with Christian Horner. Two, performance um, by a Red Bull falling off a cliff. And three, infrastructure. Are there too many people leaving Red Bull? Uh, that it means that they don't have the same, the same impact, the same brilliance as they did before. And I mean specifically one major loss. But let's start with that rift with Christian Horner. How much do you think that's got to do with this? I didn't think Max himself had a riff with Christian Horner, right? Although it does come from the Verstappen family. Um, seems like he gets along well with with Christian Horner, but um, look, I don't. I don't think Max comes off as a guy who cares about you know the uh, what do you, what do we want to call it the the, the fruity stuff like the the, uh, fruity stuff. the, the, <laughs> the interpersonal relationships and things like that. I think what, one thing that's very evident coming off of this weekend is he cares about the car being quick and the strategy being great. And if it's neither of the two, then he's going to be upset no matter what. Um, I find it hard to believe that, um, you know, uh, a strained relationship with Christian Horner. And by the way, Christian Horner has no business having a strained relationship with with Max Verstappen. Like, because if he if he didn't mind re-signing Checo, then I don't, don't quite know. Should be polishing Max's shoes every time. I mean, that that's how it should be right now. So I don't know. I don't feel like there is that part there for me. But am I missing something there? No, I know. I'm, I'm with you. I think, you know, we, we probably can't discount the fact that there was uh, that there has been a rift that there is an ongoing sort of niggling issue there mm. um that uh, that i think the performance of the car was able to paper over at the beginning of the season now that the car isn't performing as well and, and max isn't sort of winning races by by uh you know 20 20 or 30 seconds I mean, it's interesting isn't it that the that last year in Hungary, Max won the race by like thirty seconds, and <laughs> and, and this year he couldn't finish ahead of Charles Leclerc. You know, that that's that's the kind of level of drop off that we're talking about, uh, and and but 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 the level that they were at last season papers over a lot of rifts between different people in their camp. But maybe not having that buffer anymore um, makes it a bit more of an issue. Personally, I'm with you, um, and you can take this to the bank. I don't think that that's a problem. I think all of that stuff happens in the background. Um, even the stuff with uh, with his dad, I, I feel like Jos would say something, but Max would just be like, yeah, I mean, I have to say that I'm behind my dad, but really, I don't care. I just want a fast car. He's like, he's like Ricky Bobby, man. And I've been there in like the highest, with the highest possible level of, of, of compliment complementation is that even a word i don't know but 
you know, Ricky Bobby just wanted a fast car. He just wanted to win. That's Max. Max just wants to win. And I can't oh, hate that. What a Cannot great hate comparison. that. Look at that. What a great there you comparison. Go. <laughs> um, so that brings us neatly onto performance. So is there a performance reason why Max wants to leave? Of course. I mean, you can see sure. that. I mean, we just got done talking about the fact that he wants a, a fast car. And I think it's it's become very obvious now that Red Bull are... Uh, do not have the fast car on many race weekends. They might still have it on certain weekends, but um, that's not the case anymore, uh, that they will win by 20 seconds uh, anymore. And I think that, that, as you said before, winning cures everything. And then when you have a winning car, that kind of covers for a lot of different things. And we started to debate this, I think, really after Miami, right, um, that our Red Bull in trouble. And, and you could see that Max was carrying the team on his shoulders, it hasn't helped that Checo has been nowhere close to to being able to help him in any reasonable way. Um, and I think that that is starting to show up. And I think this past weekend in Hungary that it all kind of came to a head where, you know, you've never seen Max complain about strategy and things like that on radio. I think that was very interesting in saying that he, you know, he openly sort of said that knowing full well that, that the rest of us would hear it too. So um, also look around the field. Uh, Mercedes have closed the gap so so well and they were the quickest car in Silverstone um, McLaren are doing their thing uh, Ferrari are not too behind even though they're they're slightly on a downward trend and so if you're Max and you're looking at things and these things move in cycle so Red Bull might be in trouble so, so I think that's the problem right is that I think that we talked about um, every dominant team reaching a, a, a ceiling in terms of the performance that they can achieve from their car I think Red Bull are starting to get that but Max doesn't want to accept that. And I like that. I like that about him. I like the fact that he won't accept the fact that Red Bull are not are not, um, are, are, are not achieving the progress that he would expect them to achieve, given what they've done so far. There's a, probably a reason for that. This mechanical platform that Adrian Newey pioneered in this car was brilliant to start with. It allowed them, when nobody else was doing it, to have a, a, a platform where there was where it was much more stable they could pile downforce onto it and even when they didn't run it quite as low as they needed to it still was uh, was better than everybody else now everyone else has turned up with a slightly more compliant platform especially mclaren and mercedes and they can now pile on better downforce and um, it, it with a with a platform that's 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 compliant both longitudinally so front to back and side to side whereas Red Bull have got a problem with that side to side your characteristic, and that's limiting them right now. Um, but the 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 rift that I see there is that the is that the team seem to seem to accept that you know the other teams were just going to catch us. This is just the natural order of things. And Max saying, "Nah, this is not on. We need to find a way to 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 change what we're doing completely and and get forward." And I'm not seeing that from you. That, I think, is the crux of the performance frustration that he is having right now, together with the fact that I think he feels that the reason that Red Bull can keep making those excuses because it, it, it's because his understanding of things is we're only getting results. I'm only making this happen because of me. I'm doing this, right? You would be nowhere. Look at Checo in the other car. You would be nowhere if it weren't for me driving the wheels off this thing. And we saw that. that, that I thought that the most telling radio exchange that I got from him was that um was was after uh GP said to him oh that was a great introduction to these tires and Max went off on one he was, he was basically I'm paraphrasing here saying look man you gave me a rubbish strategy a rubbish car I'm doing this I'm I'm getting us forward here this is everything that's happening is my fault so don't criticize me about the way I'm driving because it's me that's getting us a result and I get that I would be angry if I was him right now too yeah, I get that. And I love that. And I think that, um, again, no matter what he says, it's not easy to just beat out other teams now. And I think you can tell now that McLaren are firmly the quickest car moving forward. Um, I think maybe one or two tracks where at, at least you know that they'll be competitive. And you know, I, I read a stat there saying that Lando would have to finish first and Max would have to finish in second in every remaining race. And Lando would be ahead of Max uh, for the driver's championship by by some points. Now, uh, you know, the math can can work different ways, but it does seem like there's a path for Lando to win. It's not a crazy path for him. And I think Max sees that, too, because, look, as a driver, you're going to know 
how soon the competition has caught up to you race after race after race and a driver of Max's intelligence recognizes yeah. that. So you can definitely see that panic in his voice. And I think the question now is, can they be competitive in 25? I mean, this year is what it is. And I, I'm not I'm not quite sure that they can be because yeah, these I other agree. teams are going to arrive with even more fervor than, than they have right yep. now. And I think that's part of it. I think when he, when he looks at his future, he can see complacency in the technical team right now. The team that when when Adrian Newey decided to to leave Red Bull, they were talking up, we don't need Adrian Newey, we've got Pierre Vaché. Right, but but what's happened when you've put the other the other bods in charge of yeah. the farm? That they're, they're, they're not making the progress that they were anymore. And you know, I think Max yeah. sees that. He's going to look at the infrastructure and say, well, you managed to lose... The silver bullet you lost the best technical head in the sport maybe ever and what well, i'm supposed to just go along with this and be happy i wouldn't be he isn't clearly and on top of that other big names are being poached by other teams like you said you know rob marshall's headed off to mclaren audi sauber have, have hired a whole bunch of uh uh bods from red bull all of that is i think None of that is helping their their cause in terms of being a cohesive team that is continuing to stay at the front. I also think that the change is is inevitable, right? Even for a team like Red Bull that have been so dominant, and let's say they win this year too, right? It wouldn't be unusual for a four time champion to to leave the team too, right? Um, so I think there could also be that sort of sunsetting of of a relationship that has been fruitful for as long as it's it's been. But it wouldn't be the first time a Red Bull driver has done that. It wouldn't be the first time a reigning champion has switched teams too. So I think there's an element of that that Max looks at too and say, okay, if you go to a new place where you have a different kind of, and we talked about this with Lewis Hamilton, right? You have a new sort of emotion to the hunger you have for more championships. And, you know, other teams are looking to get back in it. You know, certainly, the you know, like Mercedes kind of want to get back after 21, right? Um, and I think it, I think he can see that happening. And look, it's probably not lost on him that for all the uh, the, the the public flirting that that Toto has been doing, Mercedes have somehow managed to to leapfrog Red Bull in in some ways. At least on Silverstone, they were right. So they're right there now, right? Um, and and he can see that too. That's probably not lost on him. And I'm sure Toto is pulling more strings there, right, from from behind the scenes. So so let's talk about that, right? So we've talked about the push. The pull is. Well, I think that the big the big <laughs> draw is the fact that Mercedes Benz have still not signed a replacement for Lewis Hamilton for 2025, uh, and Amar, mate, this is this is your arena. You called this early. Max has happened to Mercedes Benz. Well, what can I say? I I, I always felt like um, that they would need and, and look, Mercedes need a superstar, right? And Kimi Antonelli very well might be that, um, but I've long believed that that I think that getting Max right now puts them right back in the mix as far as um, not just being dominant on track, but off track, having the marketability that, that Lewis brought. Like, who else would you replace Lewis Hamilton with? There's probably only two drivers that you could do that with, right? And, and Max is really one of them. Um, and so, yes, as much as Kimi Antonelli has that promise, he can wait another year and Kimi himself has, has announced some, some sort of trepidation and trying to jump to formula one right away. So he might need that extra year. And, and if Max goes there, then, then it gives Kimi even more time to kind of, you know, make his way there. Um, and so I, I think that there's, there's that and Mercedes seem to be aligned well for the upcoming changes in engine regulations as well. So uh, there's probably that element of, of that as well that Max is looking at, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, I think when you said this initially, um, you guys can see my response uh, on, on all of our previous videos. I thought you were talking a load of hippie cock. Um, but, but that was then, you know, Max was was winning Bahrain and we had nothing to talk about. I foresaw was, all of this, Shaz. What are you talking clearly, about? Clearly, clearly, clearly you, 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 you did. <laughs> um, and I thought, what the heck is he smoking? But now, now things have changed we are not in the same era anymore mercedes have definitely uh got a better mechanical platform mclaren are miles ahead now okay not miles ahead that's hyperbole but you know the last four or five races mclaren have arguably had the quickest car and in hungary they certainly did there was no question about it at a track that like we said red bull won by 30 seconds last season you know 
now you can understand why he might not want to stay at Red Bull and that the allure of another team is 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 appealing and Mercedes seems to be a good fit. You know, they haven't lost their talismanic technical director. In fact, they've brought him back in to fix the issues. James Allison, I think, is the only other technical director on the grid right now that can rival Adrian Newey. So they've got an aero team that can win races and they've got a good understanding of their car, finally. And on top of that, You've got the law of 2026 where Red Bull are trying to create their own um, power unit from scratch uh, and are complaining about the uh, about the the, the the power unit rules already. Mercedes are quietly like, OK, don't worry, we got this. And their dyno numbers sound like they're pretty hot. You bring those two things together and you've got potentially a recipe for major, major success in 2026, maybe even in 2025, the way things are going. Yeah, I think I, I think given his frustrations at Red Bull, the, the specific things that he's worried about, Mercedes has has very good answers to each and one of those uh, each and every one of those those questions that he is asking about Red Bull, both from a team harmony point of view, a performance point of view, and an infrastructure point of view. Maybe they are the team. How likely? I don't know. They also appear to be the team that will let him do his sim racing on 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 his off hours too. So there's that. Oh, we. Sh- <laughs> I gotta say, I was uh, I, I I heard that in comms, uh, and man, I thought Crofty, mate, you're being a little bit disingenuous, aren't you here, right? Um, and and he really stuck to his guns about the whole sim racing thing, and oh, he's staying up to well, three a.m. sim racing, and then hell, what Marco's come out this this week and said, ah. Oh, yeah, we, we we've now banned him from from doing sim races late at night, and he's agreed just, to it. I just oh, love the idea. I love the no. idea of that. What what have they banned Checo from doing? Like talking to his family, like until you get on the podium. Like is that is that how it works? Yeah. It has to be something, Lost doesn't really. it? It's just yeah, nuts, absolutely nuts. I, again, another reason to 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 say don't bother staying at Red Bull. Oof, that's the straw that broke the camel's back. Now, and now it's we know why racing. Max is leaving. <laughs> <laughs> And there you go and on that bombshell max is leaving that should be the that should be the headline of this video um tell us what you guys think mm. is max is max frustrated enough that he's just going to go uh have red bull reached a critical point where they just can't offer him what he needs anymore uh let us know what you think if you like what we're doing here um drop us a like uh please subscribe uh drop us a comment we'll read all of them and we'll uh, respond to as many as we possibly can amar this has been awesome as always we will see right. you guys in the next one. Later.